This is Knowledge Engineering with Semantic Web Technologies. And this is part 8, the last part of the first lecture, Knowledge Engineering and the Web of Data. In the last part of the lecture, we have learned about the resource description framework to formulate simple facts with RDF, so to represent simple knowledge. And today we want to focus on a specific serialization, the so-called turtle serialization of RDF, which is quite easy, readable and understandable. So, we are right now on the information exchange layer within the Semantic Web Technology stack and we are, of course, talking about the resource description framework. So, let's look at the following example. So, first, I show you the example always here as a graph representation and you see here also our starting point, with this, which is the so-called n triples representation. So, as a graph, we see here the nodes represent the resources, which are either a URI or can be a literal, as you see here. And uh, in n triples, then in the notation, the URI always is embraced by so-called angle brackets and literals usually are written in quotation marks. So what you see here is we have planet Pluto. It has been discovered in 1930, so 1930 is a literal. And it has been discovered by Clyde Tombeau, who is the discoverer. Of Pluto. Okay, now let's look at the first turtle representation. So here in the yellow box you see the turtle. So what you see first is of course we have more lines, but the lines of course are shorter, which is nice. So first thing we can do, we can use abbreviations, but of course we have to denote what these abbreviations really mean. So the first thing what we can introduce are so-called prefixes. You see here I define a prefix dbo and usually a prefix always closes with a colon. So the colon separates usually the prefix from the suffix. And the first prefix I define here, it's further on referred to as dbo and a colon. And this stands for the dbpedia ontology. And then you see later on within the triples you see here in turtle notation there, the property is rather short because instead of using the entire URI, I can use simply the defined prefix dbo and a colon. So, of course, this saves a lot of space and it's much more easier to read. Okay, but there is also another abbreviation here. So, next, you see here the so-called base directive. So, the base directive usually holds for the entire document, but of course you can change the base directive because it refers to all definitions and all so-called relative URIs which come after this base definition. So what does it mean? So you see here Pluto is not referred to by its entire URI, but only by the suffix Pluto, but with angle brackets around it. So this means this is a so-called relative URI, and all relative URIs are expanded according to the given base directive in the document. If there is no base directive, then usually a relative URI within an RDF document is expanded with a URI of the entire document. So if you give a base directive, you can change this, and of course this is another abbreviation, this saves a lot of space, and of course it enhances readability. So these are the first two abbreviations which uh, serve in turtle for better readability. Okay, but we can do even more. So if, as you see here in the graph representation, um, you can see that Pluto only occurs once, I mean in one node. And in the turtle representation, we have Pluto twice in both of the facts we want to represent. So this is some kind of redundancy. And in turtle, you can get rid of this redundancy. So simply by stating with the help of a semicolon that the following property and object also refer to the previous subject, as you see here. So the first RDF triple does not end with a period as usual, it ends with a semicolon. And the semicolon means that the subsequent triples have the same subject. And this is a so-called predicate list. So I can use this and Pluto is there only once referred to in the turtle file. So this is another kind of abbreviation. But you could also imagine that, for example, you might have the same subject and the same predicate, but different objects. 
Also, therefore, there is a possibility in turtle. So you see here, for example, first in the graph representation, again, planet Pluto, and then the satellites of Pluto. And there we have Hydra, which is a moon of Pluto. We have Nix, and we have Charon, or Charon, which is also, which is the largest moon of Pluto. So to represent this in the turtle file, it's quite easy. So we have Pluto once, then also one time only the property, which is DBO has satellite. And then I can refer to all the three moons, but they have to be separated then via comma. This means if I close the first triple with a comma, all subsequent triples share the same subject and the same property. And this is a so-called object list. So with this, you have further means of abbreviation. And this, of course, enhances, as we have already said, the readability of these files. So you see, turtle is quite easy to understand. Let's look at another example. Here we have typed literals. You know, we can have untyped literals, which are usually interpreted, for example, as a string. And we also can, of course, use XML schema definition data types. And these data types we have seen in the previous section of the course, how to define this, can also here be used in turtle. So here, for example, just look first at the graph representation. We have Pluto, and we say that Pluto has a mean radius of a certain size and has a mean temperature. It has been discovered at a specific date. And of course, it has a name which is referred to by RDFS label. So the label of Pluto is Pluto and here written in English. So how do we write this? in RDF turtle. So first of all, we have to use lots of namespaces. Of course, again, we have to use the DBpedia ontology namespace. Then we have to use the XML schema definition namespace. We have to use the RDFS namespace. And of course, we also define here a base namespace for further abbreviations. So, and then you can have a look at the RDF triples, which are rather short. We say here that Pluto has a mean radius and then there is the type literal, which means we have a floating point with double precision here. We say this is 1161.00 and we say that this has the data type double. Then we have a mean temperature of the same data type and then we have um, the, the date when Pluto has been discovered and this of course has been or will be interpreted as a date format. So the first four characters or the first four uh, digits here mean that is the year, then comes the month and then the day. And then we have the RDFS label. Again, this is Pluto and this is in English encoding and you could also use other languages, for example, here. So these are so-called typed literals and how to express them in turtle. Okay, so this is not much, of course, and this is quite easy to understand, but there are some more problems we have to solve with this kind of representation. So for example, just imagine that Pluto was or has been visited twice by spaceships. So the first spaceship, this was rather recently, was the space probe called New Horizon. And let's assume that in 200 years from now, there will be the USS Enterprise, which will also visit Pluto. Okay, let's look at the graph representation. We have here Pluto and we have two space missions, which um, reached Pluto or have visited Pluto, which was New Horizon and the USS Enterprise here. And also we have the visiting dates. So it has been visited once in July 2015 and once in July 2245. The problem here is not whether this is true or false. The problem here is how should I somehow combine what belongs together? So which one is the date when New Horizon has visited? And which one is the date when the USS Enterprise has visited? So how do I make this unique association? At least in the graph model like this, as we see it here, it's not possible. Okay, so how do we solve that problem? We have already learned about so-called blank nodes. So blank nodes uh, usually stand for something which has an existence of its own, but it does not necessarily have a name or is not necessarily directly identified with an individual. So we can use blank nodes exactly also here to denote two space missions which have reached Pluto. And then 
with each of these space missions, we can associate a spaceship and we can associate a visiting date. So here it's pretty simple. So I have the first blank note, which is associated with the spaceship New Horizons and the visiting date in 2015. And I have the second space mission blank note, which is associated with the USS Enterprise and the date in the future. So, as you see here, blank notes can be used to represent so-called multi-valued relation relationships pretty easily. So, this is one design directive I wanted to address with you. This is the reason why, for example, we use blank notes here in RDF. Okay, so how do I now encode this graph within Turtle? So let's have a look. Whenever I use blank notes as a subject, I use here these so-called squared brackets, as you see here. So first I want to model the fact that I have something which has a spaceship and which has a visiting date. So I say here, I want to define a blank note with these two uh, square braces, uh, but we do not know anything about that. So this has no URI. So it's simply these two squared braces. And then I say this thing has a spaceship and has a visiting date. And of course I complement my triples accordingly. So this is an anonymous blank note as a subject. Okay, but I want to go further in my knowledge representation, so I want to make clear that Pluto has been visited by that space mission and also by another space mission. So then I also will apply this blank node as an object. And more than that, this object then has also several properties. So I also have triples which use this object as a subject. Okay, so this is encoded in the following way. So here we have Pluto and you see it has a space mission. Exactly, it has two space missions and then you see two sections that are embraced by these squared braces. And within the squared braces there are the two facts which refer to the blank node. So it means Pluto has a space mission which is a blank node. So you have the square braces here and inside the square braces there is knowledge about this blank node. So it means the blank node within this um, uh, braced, uh, squared braces, um, there are two triples encoded and they are nested. So there are the spaceship and the visiting date. So first for the New Horizons and second one for the USS Enterprise. So this kind of construction is called a nested anonymous blank node. So you will have uh, several possibilities also to, uh, to, to go deeper into that kind of notation and to do something with this in the exercises of the course. Okay, so we remember or we keep in mind blank notes are can be referred to as so-called anonymous nodes, so they do not have a name. They cannot be addressed from outside, but they can be used or are rather useful for this kind of modeling. So for modeling, for example, this kind of knowledge. And the other thing is, of course, you can also make a statement about the existence of something with these blank nodes. Okay, but you might have one further problem. If further on in your knowledge representation you want again refer somehow to that blank node, it will be rather difficult always to treat it as an anonymous node. So sometimes also for readability of the file it's quite easier to give this node a name. But if the node should not be addressable from the outside, then you do not provide an entire URI for that node. You only give an internal reference, an internal reference identifier to that node. And these are then so-called dereferenceable blank nodes. So for example, you can name the first blank node ID1 and the second blank node ID2. But these names, remember that they cannot be addressed from outside, only from inside the RDF document you are currently working. So to define these two nodes in turtle, of course, you have to use a notation that is pretty close to the URI notation. So here you use a special kind of prefix, which usually is only an underscore. So you use an underscore and then a colon, and this always denotes a blank node. 
And then it denotes always a blank node, which is dereferenceable, which means it has an ID that can be accessed throughout the entire document. So this one is underscore colon ID one and underscore colon ID two. And then of course, this fact can also be represented rather easily and it's much better readable here, for example, if then I can refer to or reference these nodes by their given name as a subject for further triple definitions, as you see here. So this might be quite handy for you. So you have to distinguish, either you make a node completely anonymous or you give it a name and if you give a node a name, just think about should it be reachable or dereferenceable from outside? So should it be globally visible? Or do you want to hide this because nobody should be interested in it? So for these reasons, you can decide which of the possibilities you choose. Okay, so let's remember or let's recapitulate what we have done so far. We have learned about certain abbreviations in Turtle, and we have learned about blank nodes. Okay, one more thing in this part of the lecture are further so-called aggregations of RDF triples, of RDF things. So there is something or a construct which is called RDF lists, and this is a general data structure which allows us to enumerate resources or enumerate literals. So for example, if I want to make a list or a set of things, then I can do this with these so-called RDF lists and I can refer to that. I can say that a certain subject has to do something with an entire set of things. So this is why lists have been introduced. And generally here, um, we distinguish between two different lists. First one are the so-called containers. So containers are so-called open lists, which means when I, whenever I have defined the set as a container, I can further on extend it with further members of the container. And there are the so-called collections, and these are so-called closed lists, lists which are not extensible anymore. So keep in mind that this, of course, is only something which is also referred to as syntactic sugar. So there is no additional semantics in it. These are only kind of shortcuts and abbreviations. You can also write this in a completely different way. I mean, if a subject has to do with a set of things, of course, the subject has to do with each members of that set. And therefore, of course, you could use an entire list of triples instead of that. So this is only or again for abbreviation. So let's have a look at these constructs. First, the container, the open list. So here, for example, I define something, a container, which is called the solar system. And I say the solar system has planets. So the solar system has planets, and then the object I refer to, this is the container. So this is a blank node. And the blank node has a specific container type. And the type here, you can choose between a sequential type, which means this is an ordered set. So there, the order is important. Or you can say it's a bag, which is an unordered set. So here, the order of the members of the set um, does not take uh, is, or is not really of importance. And the third variant that you can choose is the so-called alternatives uh, container. There you have a set of different choices and only one of them is valid for your application. So you can choose one of these members. And you see here, the members of that container are on the right side. These are the planets. It's only six planets here. It's Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And um, they, are connected to the container via a special container membership property. And this membership property is pretty simple. So it comes from the namespace RDF, and then it's underscore one, underscore two, underscore three, and so on and so on. So it's numbered. And the number, of course, it's important, especially for the ordered set. So here, for example, for the planets, number one is Mercury, number two is Venus, number three is Earth, and so on and so on. So here we have an ordered set. Okay, so far the graph representation, yet let, let's have a look how this is then encoded in Turtle. So in Turtle, you have a triple which says the solar system has planets, and then of course the rest has to be encoded within a nested anonymous blank node that you see here, like in the graph representation. So it means you have to start your square braces, and then you say this is a container of type sequential. 
So here is again something new. Usually you would write RDF type and then RDF sequential. But here you see a further abbreviation of turtle. Instead of RDF type, you can also simply write A. So this means, of course, it's only a syntactic abbreviation. This means um, the blank node is a sequential container. Okay, and then, of course, um, the same blank node is connected to all of its members. And then comes the uh, container membership property, as we have talked about. So RDF colon underscore one, this is Mercury, and so on, then for Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And then you close your squared braces, and then there comes the period to close the triple definition, and that's it. So that's an RDF container. And this, of course, is furthermore extensible. It's an open list. The alternative to that is the closed list, so which is then the so-called RDF collection. RDF collections are closed lists, which cannot be extended further after they have been defined. And RDF collections are organized as lists are organized, as linked lists are organized in programming. So maybe from your programming courses, you know about linked lists. And linked lists usually are defined recursively. So they consist usually of a head element and the tail, which is the rest of the list. And the rest of the list, the tail, is organized in exactly the same way. Also, the tail has a head and it has, again, a tail and so on and so on and so on. So this is a recursive definition. And here, the RDF collection exactly reflects this uh, way of organizing lists. It's also the same like uh, in the artificial intelligence programming language LISP. So the list processing language, maybe you have heard of that. There also, you are organizing lists in the very same way. So. Let's have a look. The RDF collection here, again, we have the solar system which has planets and which has planets points to a blank node and the blank node here is a collection. And this collection has, of course, a first element here which is the head of the list and this is Mercury. And then the rest of the list, the tail. And the two uh, properties which are used to connect them are RDF first for the head and RDF rest for the tail. And then RDF rest points to another blank node, which again is organized in the same way. So it means the next blank node also has a property RDF first, which points to the head of the rest of the tail of the list. And of course, then the rest of the rest again is pointed to another blank node and so on and so on and so on. And there follow the rest of the planets Venus Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And the end of the list, then of course, when the last planet has added to it, then the rest of the list is empty, is null or nil, would, uh, as you would say in Latin. So there we have a special individual here, a special language element in RDF. This is RDF nil, which denotes the end of an RDF collection, so the end of this kind of list. Okay, so how is this more or less complicated construct now translated and encoded in Turtle? So it's straightforward. So we start with the solar system and the solar system has planets and then there comes a blank node with nested information inside. So we start here with a squared brace. So inside the squared brace, first we have the first element, RDF first, which is Mercury. This is the head of the list, and then there comes the rest, RDF rest, which points to another blank node with nested information. And the nested information is always organized in exactly the same way. The only thing here is you have to open again and again and again squared braces for each of the blank nodes that are used in this construction. And after that, when you have finished your list definition and when you have uh, put in the last property RDF rest and connected it with the end of the list, which is the individual RDF nil, then you have to close all your open squared braces. And don't forget one of them to close. So, yeah, we have to confess this if the, the, the collection 
gets rather large and if there is more information inside than a simple triple, for example, then it might be rather difficult to read. So the point is um, the definers or the creators of Turtle, they have again thought of another kind of abbrevi abbreviation for exactly this kind of uh, collection. And um, for this, they have introduced now the regular braces, which are round here. And they simply are an abbreviation for this longer kind of collection definition. So here you write simply, the solar system has planets, and then you open your brace. And then simply you enumerate all the members of that collection. So these members are separated simply by space. And when you are finished, you simply close the brace and then make your period. And this again internally, the turtle interpreter will retranslate it in exactly the construct you see here. But as we see here in our definition, this of course is quite simple and quite easy to read. So these were the two kind of lists that are available in RDF Turtle, which are containers, remember they are open, and collections, they are closed. In the next part of the lecture, which means in the second lecture, we want to go deeper into knowledge representation with RDF.